Chapter 6. Johnny gagged and I almost dropped my hot fudge sundae. Cherry? We both said at the same time, the soche? Yeah, Dally said. She came over to the vacant lot that night, too, but was jumped. Shepard and some of his outfit and us were hanging around there when she drives up in her little old stingray. That took a lot of nerve. Some of us was for jumping her then and there, her being the dead kid's girl and all, but two bits stopped us. Man, next time I want a broad, I'll pick up my own kind. Yeah, Johnny said slowly, and I wondered if, like me, he was remembering another voice, also tough and just deepened into manhood, saying, next time you want a broad, pick up your own kind. It gave me the creeps. Dally was going on. She said she felt like the whole mess was her fault, which it is, and that she'd keep up with what was coming off with the socias in the rumble and would testify that the socias were drunk and looking for a fight and that you fought back in self-defense. He gave a grim laugh. That little gal sure does hate me. I offered to take her over to the dingo for a Coke and she said no thank you and told me where I could go in very polite terms. She was afraid of loving you, I thought. So Cherry Valance, the cheerleader, Bob's girl, the Soche, was trying to help us. No, it wasn't Cherry the Soche who was trying to help us. It was Cherry the Dreamer, who watched sunsets and could stand, couldn't stand fights. It was hard to believe a Soche would help us, even a Soche that dug sunsets. Dally didn't notice. He had forgotten about it already. Man, this place is out of it. What do they do for kicks around here? Play checkers? Dally surveyed the scene without interest. I ain't never been in the country before. Have you two? Johnny shook his head but said, Dad used to take us all hunting. I've been in the country before. How do you know about this church? I got a cousin that lives around here somewheres. Tip me off that I'd make it would make a tough hideout in case of something. Hey, pony boy, I heard you were the best shot in the family. Yeah, I said, Darry always got the most ducks, though. Him and Dad. Soda and I goofed around too much, scared most of the game away. I couldn't tell Dally that I hated to shoot things. He'd think I was soft. That was a good idea. I mean, cutting your hair and bleaching it. They printed your descriptions in the paper, but you sure wouldn't fit them now. Johnny had been quietly fishing, finishing his fifth barbecue sandwich. But now he announced, we're going back and turning ourselves in. It was Dally's turn to gag. Then he swore a while. Then he turned to Johnny and demanded, what? I said, we're going back and turn ourselves in, Johnny repeated in a quiet voice. I was surprised, but not shocked. I had thought about turning ourselves in lots of times, but apparently the whole idea was a jolt to Dallas. I got a good chance of being let off easy, Johnny said desperately, and I didn't know if it was Dally he was trying to convince or himself. Ain't got no record with no fuzz, and it was self-defense. Pony and Cherry could testify to that, and I don't aim to stay in the church all my life. That was quite a speech for Johnny. His big black eyes grew bigger than ever at the thought of going to the police station, for Johnny had a deadly fear of cops. But he went on, we won't tell them you helped us, Dally, and we'll give you back the gun and what's left of the money and say we hitchhike back so you won't get into trouble, okay? Dally was chewing the corner of his ID card, which gave his age as 21 so he could buy liquor. You sure you want to go back? Us greasers get it worse than anyone else. Johnny nodded, I'm sure. It ain't fair for Pony to have to stay up here in the church with Darry and Soda worrying about him all the time. I don't guess, he swallowed and tried not to look eager. I don't guess my parents are worried about me or anything. The boys are worried, Dally said in a matter-of-fact voice. Two-bit was going to Texas to hunt for you. My parents, Johnny repeated dodgily. Did they ask about me? No, snapped Dally, they didn't. Blasted Johnny, what do they matter? Shoot, my old man don't give a hang whether I'm in jail or dead, in a car wreck or drunk in a gutter. That don't bother me none. Johnny didn't say anything, but he stared at the dashboard with such hurt bewilderment, and I could have bawled. 
Daly cussed under his breath and nearly tore out the transmission of the T-bird as we roared out of the Dairy Queen. I felt sorry for Daly. He meant, when, meant it when he said he didn't care about his parents. But he and the rest of the gang knew Johnny cared and did everything they could to make it up to him. I don't know what it is about Johnny. Maybe that lost puppy do puppy look and those big scared eyes were what made every one his big brother. But they couldn't, no matter how hard they tried, take the place of his parents. I thought about it for a minute. Darry and Soda Pop were my brothers, and I loved both of them, even if Darry did scare me. But not even Soda could take Mom and Dad's place. And they were my real brothers, not just sort of adopted ones. No wonder Johnny was hurt because his parents didn't want him. Dally could take it. Dally was of the breed that could take anything because he was hard and tough. And when he wasn't, he could turn hard and tough. Johnny was a good fighter and could play it cool, but he was sensitive. And that isn't a good way to be when you're a greaser. Blast at Johnny, Dally growled as he flew along the red road. Why didn't you think of turning yourself in five days ago? Would have saved a lot of trouble. I was scared, Johnny said with conviction. I still am. He ran his finger down one of his sh short black sideburns. I guess we ruined our hair for nothing, pony boy. I guess so. I was glad we were going back. I was sick of that church. I didn't care if I was bald. Dally was scowling from long and painful experience. I knew better than to talk to him when his eyes were blazing like that. I'd likely as not get clobbered over the head. That had happened before, just as it happened to all of the gang at one time or another. We rarely fought, fought among ourselves. Darry was the unofficial leader. Since he, since he kept his head best, Soda and Steve had been best friends since grade school and never fought, and Two-Bit was just too lazy to argue with anyone. Johnny kept his mouth shut too much to get into arguments, and nobody ever fought with Johnny. I kept my mouth shut, too. But Dally was a different matter. If something beefed him, he didn't keep quiet about it. And if you rubbed him the wrong way, look out. Not even Darry wanted to tangle with him. He was dangerous. Johnny just sat there and stared at his feet. He hated for any one of us to be mad at him. He looked awful sad. Dally glanced at him out of the corner of his eye. I looked out the window. Johnny, Dally said in a pleading high voice, using a tone I'd never heard from him before. Johnny, I ain't mad at you. I just don't want you to get hurt. You don't know what a few months in jail could do to you. I'll oh, blast it, Johnny. He pushed his white blonde hair back out of his eyes. You get hardened in jail. I don't want that to happen to you, like it happened to me. I kept staring out the window at the rapidly pacing, passing scenery, but I felt my eyes getting round. Dally never talked like that. Dally didn't give a Yankee dime about anyone but himself, and he was cold and hard and mean. He never talked about his past or being in jail that way. If he talked about it at all, it was to brag. And I suddenly thought of Dally, in jail at the age of 10, Dally growing up on the streets. Would you rather have me living in hideouts for the rest of my life, always on the run? Johnny asked seriously. If Dally had to say yes, Johnny would have gone back to the church without hesitation. He figured Dally knew more than he did, and Dally's word was law. But he never heard Dally's answer, for he, we had reached to the top of Jay Mountain, and Dally suddenly slammed on the brakes and stared. Oh, glory, he whispered, the church was on fire. Let's go to see what the deal is, I said, hopping out. What for, Dally sounded irritated. Get back in here before I beat you head in. I knew Dally would have have to park the car and catch me before he could carry out his threat. And Johnny was already out and following me, so I figured I was safe. We could hear him cussing us out, but he wasn't mad enough to come after us. There was a crowd at the front of the church, most likely kids, and I was wondering how they got in there so quickly. I tapped the nearest grown-up. What's going on? Well, we don't know for sure, the man said with a good-natured grin. We were having a school picnic up here, and the first thing we knew, the place is burning up. Thank goodness this is a wet season, and the old thing is worthless anyway. Then, to the kids, he shouted, Stand back, children. The firemen will be coming soon. 
I bet we started it, I said to Johnny. We must have dropped a lighted cigarette or something. About that time, a lady came running up. Jerry, some of the kids are missing. They're probably around here somewhere. You can't tell with all this excitement where they might be. No, she shook her head. They've been missing for at least half an hour. I thought they were climbing the hill. Then we all froze. Faintly, just faintly, you could hear someone yelling, and it sounded like it was coming from inside the church. The women went wild. The women went white. I told them not to play in the church. I told them. She looked like she was going to start screaming, so Jerry shook her. I'll get them, don't worry. I stared at the dead run for the church, and the man caught my arm. I'll get them, you kids stay out. I jerked loose and ran on. All I could think was, we started it, we started it, we started it. I wasn't about to go through that flaming door, so I slammed the big rock through a window and pulled myself in. It was a wonder I didn't crush myself to death now that I think about it. Hey, pony. I looked around, startled. I hadn't realized Johnny had been right behind me the whole way. I took a deep breath and started coughing. The smoke filled my eyes and they started watering. Is that guy coming? Johnny shook his head. The window stopped him. Too scared? Nah, Johnny just gave me a grin. Too fat. I couldn't laugh because I was scared. I drowned in the smoke. The roar and the crackling was getting louder and Johnny shouted the next question. Where's the kids? In the back, I guess. I hollered and we were staring, stumbling through the church. I should be scared. I thought with an odd detached feeling, but I'm not. The cinders and the embers began falling on us, stinging and smarting like ants. Suddenly, in the red glow and in the haze, I remember wondering what it was like in a burning ember. And I thought, now I know. It's red hell. Why aren't I scared? We pushed open the door to the back room and found four or five little kids, about eight years old or younger, huddled up in a corner. One was screaming his head off, and Johnny yelled, Shut up, we're going to get you out. The kid looked surprised and quit hollering. I blinked myself. Johnny wasn't behaving at all like his old self. He looked over his shoulder and saw that the door was blocked by flames, then pushed open the window and tossed out the nearest kid. I caught one quick look at his face. It was red, marked from falling embers and sweat streaked, but he grinned at me. He wasn't scared either. That was the only time I can think of when I saw him without that defeated, suspicious look in his eyes. He looked like he was having the time of his life. I picked up a kid and promptly bit, he promptly bit me, but I leaned out the window and dropped him as gently as I could, being in a hurry like that. A crowd was there by that time. Dally was standing there, and when he saw me, he screamed, for Pete's sake, get out of here. The roof's gonna cave in any minute. Forget those blasted kids. I didn't pay any attention, although pieces of the old roof were crashing down too close for comfort. I snatched up another kid, hoping he didn't bite, and dropped him without wanting to see if he landed okay or not. I was coughing so hard I could hardly stand up, and I wish I had time to take off Dally's jacket. It was hot. We dropped the last of the kids out at the front of the church, started to crumble. Johnny shoved me toward the window. Get out! I leaped out the window and heard timber crashing and the flames roaring right behind me. I staggered, almost falling, coughing and sobbing for breath. Then I heard Johnny scream. As I turned to go back for him, Dally swore at me and clubbed me across the back as hard as he could and I went down into the peaceful darkness. When I came to, I was being bounced around, and I ached and smarted and wondered dimly where I was. I tried to think, but there was a high-pitched screaming going on, and I couldn't tell whether it was inside my head or not. Then I realized it was a siren, the fuzz, I thought dully. The cops have come for us. I tried to swallow a groan and wished wildly for soda. Someone with a cold, wet rag was gently sponging off my face, and a voice said, I think he's coming around. I opened my eyes. It was dark. I'm moving, I thought. Are they taking me to jail? Where? I said hoarsely, not able to get anything else out of my mouth. My throat was sore. I blinked at the stranger sitting beside me, but he wasn't a stranger. I'd see him before. 
Take it easy, kid. You're in an ambulance. Where's Johnny? I cried, frightened as being in the car with strangers. And Dallas. They're in the other ambulance right behind us. Just calm down. You're going to be okay. You just passed out. I didn't either, I said in the bored, tough voice we reserve for strangers and cops. Dally hit me. How come? Because your back was in flames, that's why. I was surprised. It was, gosh, I didn't feel it. I don't hurt. We put it out before you got burned. That jacket saved you from a bad burning. Maybe saved your life. You just keeled over from smoke inhalation and a little shock. Of course, that slap on the back didn't help much. I remember who he was then. Jerry somebody or other who was too heavy to get in the window. He must be a school teacher, I thought. Are you taking us to the police station? I was still a little mixed up as to what was coming off. The police station? It was his turn to be surprised. What would we be taking you to the police station for? We're taking all three of you to the hospital. I let his first remark slide by. Are Jolly, Johnny and Dally all right? Which one's which? Johnny has black hair. Dally's the mean looking one. He studied his wedding ring. Maybe he's thinking about his wife, I thought. I wished he'd say something. We think the Towhead kid is going to be all right. He burned one arm pretty badly, though, trying to drag the other kid out of the window. Johnny, well, I don't know about him. A piece of timber caught him across the back. He might have a broken back, and he was burned pretty severely. He passed out before he got out the window. They're giving him plasma now. He must have seen the look on my face because he hurriedly changed the subject. I swear you three are the bravest kids I've seen in a long time. First you and the black-haired kid climbing in that window, and then the tough-looking kid going back in to save him. Mrs. O'Brien and I think we're sent straight from heaven. Or are you just professional heroes or something? Sent from heaven? He had gotten a good look at Dallas. No, we're greasers, I said. I was too worried and scared to appreciate the fact that he was trying to be funny. You're what? Greasers, you know, like hoods, JDs. Johnny is wanting for murder and Dallas has a record with the fuzz a mile along. Are you kidding me? Jerry stared at me as if he thought I was still in shock or something. I am not. Take me to town and you'll find out pretty quick. We're taking you to the hospital there anyway. The address card in your billfold said that you were it's where you lived. Your name's really Pony Boy? Yeah, even on my birth certificate. And don't mug me about it. Or I felt weak. Are the little kids okay? Just fine. A little frightened, maybe. There were some short explosions right after you all got out. Sounded just like gunfire. Gunfire. There went our gun. And gore, gone with the wind. Where we sent from heaven. I started a laugh weakly. I guess that guy knew how close to hysterics I really was. For he talked to me in a low, soothing voice all the way to the hospital. I was sitting in the waiting room, waiting to hear how Dally and Johnny were. I had been checked over, and except for a few burns and a big bruise across my back, I was all right. I had watched them bring Dally and Johnny in on stretchers. Dally's eyes were closed, but when I spoke, he tried to grin and had told me that if I ever did a stupid like thing like that again, he'd beat the tar out of me. He was still swearing at me when they took him in. Johnny was unconscious. I had been afraid to look at him, but I was relieved to see that his face wasn't burned. He just looked very pale and still and sort of sick. I would have cried at the sight of him, so still except I couldn't in front of people. Jerry Wood had stayed with me the whole time. He kept thanking me for getting the kids out. He didn't seem to mind our being hoods. I told him the whole story, starting when Dallas and Johnny and I had met at the corner of Pickett and Sutton. I left out the part about the gun and our hitching a ride in a freight car. He was real nice about it and said that being heroes would help us get out of trouble, especially since it was self-defense and all. I was sitting there smoking a cigarette when Jerry came back in front from making a phone call. He stared at me for a second. You shouldn't be smoking. I was startled. How come? I looked at my cigarette. 
It looked okay to me. I looked around for a no smoking sign and couldn't find one. How come? Why, uh, Jerry stammered, uh, you're too young. I am? I never thought about that. Everyone in our neighborhood, even the girls, smoked, except for Darry, who was too proud of his athletic health to risk a cigarette. We had all started smoking at an early age. Johnny had been smoking since he was nine. Steve started at 11. So no one thought it's unusual when I started. I was the weed fine in the family. Soda smokes only to steady his nerves and when he wants to look tough. Jerry simply sighed, then grinned. There are some people here to see you. Claim to be your brothers or something? I leaped up and ran for the door, but it was already open and Soda had me in a bear hug and was swinging me around. I was so glad to see him, I could have bawled. Finally, he set me down and looked at me. He pushed my hair back. Oh, pony boy, your hair, your tough, tough hair. Then I saw Darry. He was leaning in the doorway, wearing his olive jeans and black t-shirt. He was still tall, broad-shouldered Darry, but his fists were jammed in his pockets and his eyes were pleading. I simply looked at him. He swallowed and said in a husky voice, Pony boy. I let go of soda and stood there for a minute. Darry didn't like me. He had driven me away at night. He had hit me. Darry hollered at me all the time. He didn't give a hang about me. Suddenly, I realized, horrified, that Darry was crying. He didn't make a sound, but tears were running down his cheeks. I hadn't seen him cry in years, not even when Mom and Dad had been killed. I remember the funeral. I had sobbed in spite of myself. Soda had broken down and bawled like a baby, but Darry had only stood there. His fists in his pocket and that look on his face, the same helpless, pleading look that he was wearing now. In that second, what Soda and Dally and Tubit had been trying to tell me came through. Darry did care about me, maybe as much as he cared about Soda, and because he cared, he was trying too hard to make something of me. When he yelled, Pony, where have you been all this time? He meant, Pony, you scared me to death. Please be careful because I couldn't stand if anything happened to you. Darry looked down and turned away silently. Suddenly, I broke out of my daze. Darry, I screamed, and the next thing I knew, I had him around the waist and was squeezing the daylights out of him. Darry, I said, I'm sorry. He was stroking my hair, and I could hear the sobs raking him as if I fought to keep back the tears. Oh, Pawnee, I thought I, we lost you, like we did Mom and Dad. That was the silent fear then of losing another person he loved. I remembered him close, how close he and dad had been, and I wonder how I could ever have thought him hard and unfeeling. I listened to his heart pounding through his t-shirt and knew something was going to be okay. I had taken that long way around, but I was finally home to stay.